Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Santa Park from CAPP IDS, uh, our institute. Uh, was born about four years ago, so it's a very new institute. We are mostly focusing on action such. I will talk about that. Uh, but today I'm going to uh, talk about the storaging EDM experiment and how we can use that technique to search the action, uh, uh, action search. Uh, I will uh, spend some time to explain how you can use the storage ring to such EDM and then uh, I will talk about the sensitivity of the EDM in this case the static EDM then I move on to the next topic which is how you can use storage ring technique the same technique for the action search and I will also uh, talk about the the possible sensitivity you can get uh, from that uh, experiment. It's, uh, it, some people, idiom people in this room will be surprised at the uh, number. Ah, yes. <clears throat> As I said, our center uh, is newly born center. So we are located in the middle of South Korea. Uh, the name of the city is called Daejeon. Uh, we are mostly uh, focused on action search, in this case, uh, microwave uh, resonant cavity experiment. And 90, more than 90% of our project is focused on this project. And then Adriani, I believe other Adriani and Gnome people are here. So we also, some people are working on that. And the second project is the uh, free season physics uh, using the storage ring. Here we are working on the steady EDM using proton or deuteron hadronic particles. This uh, storage ring action search is newly uh, developed uh, technique. So I don't think anyone in this room have heard about this uh, method. Maybe <laughs> there <laughs> some of people. Yes, sorry. Uh, we are trying to establish this experiment somewhere around global. Uh, we are talking to some people right now, and our project um, beyond G minus the experiment, uh, uh, both Fermilab and uh, J Park. Some people are working in that project and the other comet experiment in Japan. But we organized the Patras workshop in 2016. I think some of some people were there in Jeju Island. We hosted that workshop and our center hosted. Okay, I will skip this one. Everybody knows this one. Since the first observation of the uh, measurement of the uh, EDN using the neutron or uh, Russell and of uh, Ramsey, there was huge improvement, as you can see, about three times 10 to 20 minus six, as neutron people did. So now we are they're proposing the uh, storage ring technique to search the EDM. The target sensitivity is 10 to the minus 29 each centimeter. This is possible because, as you can see, the if you use the storage ring, you can use huge number of particles. Look at the statistics. One per storage, you can have more than 10 to the 11 protons, deuterons, things. The huge statistics give you very uh, low st uh, statistical error. This is key of this experiment. And some upgrade means uh, some controlling the systematic errors by reducing residual magnetic field things. We expect 10 to the minus 30 centimeters. 
Okay, let, let me explain how you can use the storage bin. This is uh, called Thomas BMT equations. That explains you when the spin uh, is put in the both magnetic field and electric field, then the spin precession frequency is described, this formula. It looks quite complicated, but you can make this formula very simple. For example, if you don't uh, want to use magnetic field, then B field terms goes away. The two terms goes away. But there remains two uh, more terms. But uh, you can again, you can uh, make this formula more simple. If you can have a chance to remove this one, you can do this. This gamma is a Lorentz vector. If you use the two specific uh, Lorentz vector, and this term also can be go away. Then only remaining term is this one. If you don't use the B field, we call this pure electric ring. And uh, as I said, if you use specific uh, gamma factor, that means specific momentum. In this case, the second term goes away. For example, the proton case, uh, that momentum is about 0.7 GeV per C. If you use that momentum, then all terms goes away, only remaining term is this. Very simple. If you know the you know the electric field because you apply this electric field. And then you measure, if you can measure this one, then you know this electric diving moment. Very simple. This is called the frozen spin method. If, if you have that uh, momentum, when the proton or deuteron circulate uh, in the ring, the horizontal spin freeze to momentum direction. When it rotates, only the vertical the spin is accumulated due to the electric field. The only thing you need to do is just measure this one. If you measure this one, you know this one because you apply this one. And you can calculate the precession rate, the vertical precession rate, how fast spin rotates. You know that. So we are trying to establish this experiment as some, so we keep having meeting with some people. So then next question would be how you can measure this term? How, how you can measure how fast the spin presets? Yes? Uh, how long does the proton stay in the ring? Sorry? How long does the proton stay in the ring? How long? Yes. You mean the Circumference? No, well, the lifetime of the proton. Lifetime of protons? Yes, I will talk about this. That's the spin coherence time. It's 1,000 seconds. It's proved by experiment at Corsi, Germany. Yeah, 1,000 seconds. But you can have more, 10,000 seconds. I will talk about that. So polarimeter is used to measure the precession rate. So if you have uh, this kind of a hadronic particle case, if you scatter the polarized particle uh, from the target materials, let's say carbon case, then the, if you, have, let's assume that you have polarized in vertical, the target is there, it approaches scatters, then <coughs> it scatters to the left hand side, all particles scatter than the right hand side. This, from this asymmetry, this asymmetry you can calculate the vertical component of the polarization. That gives you the time variation of the polarization. This is the existing uh, story ring at Koch Yuli, Germany. Here we have been testing all the EDM uh, Stops here. This neutron, right? Yeah, this thing is for neutron. Yes, that's correct. Uh, for the electron, uh, the proton case, if you want to use pure electric ring, you have to modify this. But we are trying to uh, build new ring 
That's our plan. Not this one. This, this one is being used for the test of our experiment. Sensitivity, as I said, that's, that, let me give you one example. Let's say uh, initial polarization is 80%, analyzing power 0 0.6, and electric field, one megawatt per meet, and blah, blah. If you combine all these numbers, and if you calculate, this is the uh, proton idiom sensitivity, the target sensitivity that we are aiming. <coughs> now, how fast is the precession? Let's assume that you have uh, about 10 to the minus 29 e centimeter uh, EDM, then 10 megavolt per meter, then you get the 3 nano radian per second. <laughs> Precession is really, really tiny. So that means in order to measure the angle changes in time, you have to accumulate the, the precession for a long time. That's why you need very long string for your side. One thousand seconds is already uh, experiment proved at the cost ring. But if you adjust the sixth force more carefully, you could uh, achieve more than 10,000 seconds, something like that. The long precession time also gives you very uh, high sensitivity. Long precession time. This is called uh, three-quarters time here. And uh, I will skip this one. Now, uh, let me talk about how you can use the EDM technique, storage engineering technique, to action search. Okay, this already have shown by Arnold. These people claim that the, if axion coupled with the uh, gluons, then some hydronic particles or other particles have oscillating uh, EDMs due to the coupling with the axions. This is starting point of our uh, study. So here you see the uh, frequency ranges or the uh, axion parameter ranges that is being covered by the other experiment. Microwave cavity uh, covers that, that range and uh, molecular interferometry and other things. We propose using the storage ring, you will cover this uh, frequency range, this is huge range. You see that uh, violet arrow that I wrote. That range will be covered. So I will explain this in more detail. Sorry about this formula again. <laughs> but the spin process in three dimensions, three dimensions depending on the direction of the electric field and magnetic field. If you uh, solve these two equations, you, you, you can track how spin behaves in three dimensions. This is an example of the spin tracking. But static EDM case, when particles rotate in the rings, static EDM case always has the constant EDM values. In this case, when it rotates, electric field direction is always uh, directing to the center. <coughs> what is the relative uh, direction between EDM and electric field is changes. That means, in half cycle of the the rotation, EDM precess goes down. On the other half cycle, it's going up if it's a steady EDM. But your EDM now is oscillating. Your EDM sign changes. If you have the same frequency with the G minus two precession frequency and the action frequency, that the, the resonance conditions EDM always accumulates the same reactions. In this half cycle, it goes down. The other half cycle still goes down. Because EDM flip uh, sides. This is the idea of this resonance. So the idea is 
if you have the same frequency of the G minus 2 as the action frequency, you always keep accumulating the precession directions. This is the key idea. So you need to have the resonance between two frequencies. Let me give you some example, simulation example. For this simulation, I set the action frequency 10 to 5 and Z minus frequency 10 to 5. As you can see, the vertical component of spin accumulates. But if you have different frequencies there, your spin doesn't accumulate. In half cycle, it goes down. On the half, half cycle, it goes up. It will up and down. And it, on average, it's zero. So that means if, if there is axions, then only the frequency that matches to the G minus frequency has spike peaks if, if, if they exist. One good point, uh, good merits of this idea is you can have a huge electric, effective electric field that is mostly coming from the Lorentz transform B field. This is very huge magnetic field, the uh, electric field that you can, sometimes that you cannot produce in your lab. This is the comparison of the steady EDM and the action EDM. And how sensitive it is. <coughs> this is simulation. Uh, from the asymmetry data, you can obtain this uh, precession rate error. This error is related to the EDM error uh, uh, from that relationship. Most important point is this one. The effective electric field, this is huge. Then you have to know uh, the idea is we want to have the last effective e, uh, e field as far as you can. That means in the storage ring, you have to know how large electric field and B field you can get. So I did some calculations here. As you can see, the sensitivity in the pure uh, magnetic green case, at higher frequencies, you have very uh, high sensitivity. But if you go down, uh, go down with the frequencies, your sensitivity became worse. So for this reason, for high frequency, we use B field region, low frequency uh, region, and EV combined ring to have a uh, better sensitivity. Now, oh, this is sensitive the calculation result. Some people in this room notice this value. 10 to the minus 32 is centimeters. That's because you use very uh, many particles. Uh, this assumes uh, four years of measurement. That means eight times 10 to the seven seconds measurement with a very high Effective electric field. This is real electric field, about megavolt. You see this one? You cannot produce this electric field. But this is uh, actually available electric field, effective electric field. That gives you this very high sensitivity. We assumed action quality factor, three times 10 to the six. In some models, some people are saying it could be very large. 10 to 10. So I put both calculations here. If that's true, then you can have 10 to the minus 32 uh, essential sensitivity. This is for neutron case. This is proton case. Protons are a little bit worse than neutron because, uh, because of the uh, D field. Proton is, has higher the magnetic anomaly, so it's very fast. 
uh, at low magnetic field. So in, to control the uh, deuteron the proton precession at the frequency range that we want, we have to reduce the magnetic field. That's why you have small uh, magnetic uh, effective electric field that uh, gives you a smaller uh, sensitivity. There remains one, one more question. As you can see in this plot, the, we don't know, nobody knows action phase. But that is not the parameters that you can control in the experiment. But nobody knows. But it affects uh, spin precession rate, as you can see here. Depending on the action phase, you have different results. This is a problem when you measure action. If you are lucky, then you could have this, this phase. If you are unlucky, then you have that flat rate uh, result. But then you, 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 may, you may say there is no action at this purpose. That could not be true. But we have solution. If you have two <coughs> sets of uh, spin settings in the storage game, you have different results. From that, from this relationship, you always have the real EDM precession rate. But this uh, cannot be a problem now. Even you can calculate action phase from this field and this field. So far I talked about resonance uh, mode search. This is for low frequency search. This is very similar to the neutron uh, EDM result. If you have very low, for example, one microhertz, and you have measure, you can just measure the EDM using the uh, frozen spin method. Just do the frozen spin method experiment. You don't need any extra ex the measurement for the action search. You do the EDM experiment. Every time you measure 10,000 seconds, this is still for this time. Just do the EDM measurement, uh, static EDM measurement. And then you arrange all the data and fit with sign function. So if there is oscillations, you found the action. Yes. With this very high sensitivity. So this is experiment limit curve that uh, Arnold has shown. For comparison, I, I took, I stole this data from the paper I placed there. As you can see, uh, this very high sensitive experiment uh, has, it's almost touching the QCB now. So we are trying to improve the sensitivity trying to find out a way if there is a different way to improve the sensitivity right now. For this, we assumed the local action uh, density to be 3.3 GeV per uh, cubic centimeters. Yes, uh, we still working on the steady EDM measurement and and as you saw the sensitivity, if you use the resonance method, you can use this technique for the action search with very high sensitivity. It's, it's up to 10 to the minus 32 in centimeters. Frequency range, you can cover 10 to the minus. You can go down below this one if you, just it's a matter of time. If you take it for a longer time, then you can go down a little more. And about 100 megahertz upper bound. This is one stone two birds experiment. You do the EDM experiment, you find the actions. So now uh, we are preparing proposal 
Uh, of course, we cannot cover all the, ra the frequency ranges, but we, are we start. We will start with high frequency ra uh, reasons. Of course, with uh, B field ring. Okay, you can find. We uploaded archive this, and right now I'm preparing the paper. And you can you can go there. But uh, some table number of tables are wrong. And I found some errors in the calculation. I fixed that. The table changes, and you will see the correct number later. But the number in this presentation is correct. This this one is incorrect. Thank you very much. Questions? I'm a bit confused. On your before last slide, you said you plan to do this in COSI, and one of the slides at the beginning, you said you would like to do this at CERN. CERN, yes. CERN, if you have the proton EDM ring at CERN, we will do the EDM experiment, and, and on top of that, they automatically this action search will be carried out uh, para, in parallel. But this uh, COSI proposal is in the meantime, we just uh, we just want to uh, start the measurement here, but there is uh, many limitations in this cost rings. It's only magnetic rings, and the frequency covering range is very tiny, and the useful momentum is very tiny things. So that distinction. But we want to try it here first. And another short question. You have to, we, we know that Ramsey started in 1951 with the new one here. Yes. We are 2018. Yeah. You have roughly a time idea for this project when you will start maybe taking data for the first time. Right. No, when you think, when you, can you think that you have something going on to measure data? Measure data, this one? Yeah, when you will measure, when you will start measuring. Ah, uh, when? Yeah. Uh, as I said, I. We will uh, give proposal a COSI this year. Right now, I'm working on that. So maybe if it's possible next year, it will happen. It's a COSI. But the real proton EDM ring is not decided yet. We're still working on that with some people. Or if the ring price is better, price is better, but if it will not cost very much, then we could try build up in uh, the South Korea, yeah. Mm -hmm. That will take uh, some years, not right now. It will cost a lot of money, 50 million dollars. Yes. Oh, so, um, well, that's a, a lot of questions. Uh, um, so maybe you haven't made any kind of systematic effects studies, but then maybe just um, there could be many, but I don't know because you haven't really made really A lot problems. of systematic problems. Yeah, are there. I just have maybe one specific. Uh, so to keep the proton in the ring, right? So so it's going to radiate energy. So radiate and yes, it's charged. It's really hard to keep the proton in in the magic moment. Uh, Vincent, for example. Technical, technical things, the storage ring technical things, I cannot explain everything, but well, they have, the they have, uh, yes, they have alpha cavity there, they keep rotating the protons, that has some uh, systematic errors, but the, that systematic error is not tiny. Major systematic error comes from the residual magnetic field from us. Yeah, I, I have a question about that, because you, you explained that uh, if you set the magnetic field to zero and uh, you set the magic momentum, then you only get the effect of uh, the EDM. But in practice, of course, you will always get a, a radial magnetic field that even if you use the best shield on Earth, mm -hmm. you get, uh, I don't know, more than picotesla field, and mm -hmm. this is an enormous effect. <coughs> yeah. So how, uh, how is this a uh, very important systematic effect will be addressed? Yes. Uh, for that, uh, we have some remedy. Uh, Proton case, that's the one reason why we are using proton that has amazing momentum. That means you can use pure electric ring. That means you can have ro uh, clockwise rotating beam and counterclockwise rotating beams. 
that gives you some information about the magnetic field, residual magnetic field information. You can get uh, residual magnetic field from that, those counter-rotating beams. But the technique is using the speed magnetometer to measure the uh, residual magnetic field. And then you uh, have cancellation that the magnetic shielding you have around the ring, you have magnetic shielding structure. Then you have the measured, using the measured residual magnetic field, you cancel out that. That is, right now we, our colleague work, working on that. That costs a lot of money. If you cancel out that systematics, the cost down about one tenth, then we can build up in Korea. That fifty million dollars, we have to go to other place. So, what is roughly the stored proton current in the running proton configuration? Sorry, say again. When you're running an EDM measurement with the protons, what is the current in the ring from the charged particles that you would expect for each component? You have a certain number of protons going around. Per number second. of protons. Yeah, so what's uh, the, what's the equivalent current? Uh, right now, um, that's related to the ideas, internal beam scattering things. Uh, if you use too, too many protons because of the ideas, you will lose spin coherence time a lot. So that, that limits actually the number of particles. The target value is 10 to the 11. 10 to the 11 is the target numbers. Right now, the Cauchy ring doesn't have that uh, level. But we think that is achievable number of particles. 10 to the 11. 10 to the 11th per story. And you're yes. circulating on yes. meters at what velocity? Uh, velocity is 700 MeV per C momentum. So I, I don't remember the velocity right now. Uh, it's not very, very high speed. The limit for the axle that we call the last slide. Yes. What is the duration time for both completions? Uh, yeah, the, the, the limit. Uh, okay, which is the same. For, but the, this is the, the, the plot for the limit. Ah, yes. Slide. This is the, this density is assumed that you know action frequencies and go there and measure for four years. <coughs> Eight times 10 to 7 seconds. Okay, so for each frequency it's four years. Yes, it's four years. So this is, this uh, assumes that you know the action frequency. That is. So if you don't know it, you can read really Yeah, we have to scan. You have to scan. Yeah. That scan, if you scan, depending on the frequencies, it, uh, sensitivity is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. uh, measurement time is spin coin, uh, the action coherence time. If you, uh, for example, if you have one megahertz action search, then action co uh, coherence time is so about three seconds out there, assuming the quality factor is three times 10 to 6, three seconds. That means you measure three, only three seconds measure. That gives you about 10 to the minus 26, uh, 26 e centimeter sensitivity. Then you can, you can do this again. Mm -hmm. Questions? I actually have a small question which is not directly related to your talk, but so why don't you use the same technique for measuring the electron EGM? Uh, electron EDM, first of all, you cannot hold so many electrons uh, as proton case. That gives you a lot of statistics. And the uh, uh, major problem with the electron is there is no polarimeter electron right now. If you use the electron, the measure momentum is 15 mV per C. At that energy range, no polarimeter exist in the world. You're using a Compton scattering? Compton scattering, you can use Compton scattering, but the efficiency is very, very low. You have to uh, collect the data forever. It's really scattering, cross-section is really tiny. So it's, it's not exist. If you go with a higher uh, momentum, there are some the polarimeters, Compton uh, and the multi-electron uh, polarimeter things. But at this momentum, it's not possible.
No more questions? Okay, so thank you again. Yep. <laughs>